my name is Daphne and I haven't been around for a while but it's kind of just because I've been trying to get myself out of this funk that I've been in for the last I don't know three weeks um, with the squirrels decapitating my sunflowers and you know like the squash being taken out by squash beetles and cucumber beetles and I've seen some Japanese beetles I actually see a couple of Japanese beetles now saw some evidence of tomato hornworms which I should not have with all of the birds we have in this area so I've been kind of trying to do everything else to be in this garden which is hurting my heart <laughs> so I figured why not when we come back in the house just do a garden tour and let's just rediscover the beauty that is this garden so come with me and let's just see what the garden's been doing without my presence and hopefully we can wrangle some of the madness in and just plant some more seeds and fall back in love with Alright, so what I'm most proud of in this garden is flowers, so that might be all you see because everything else kind of looks a mess. But look at this. Have you ever seen anything more beautiful? I knew I needed more red in the garden. I've been craving red, so look at this gorgeousness here. I think this bush here is another red. And then we have our candy cane striped zanias here. This whole flower bed. I'm probably just going to like... I have a few, uh, actually I have a cherry tomato here that's just gotten ridiculous. It was the tiniest little plant. It was a leftover plant and it has gotten huge. Look at this. <laughs> but maybe I'll cut these plants out when they're done. This is what happens when you actually are not in your garden. It gets overran with stink bugs and there's some evidence of vine borers down here. I think if I cut this down, I can put in some, um, I have some okra seedlings that wasn't able to thrive here because these plants got huge really quick. So I'm thinking I'll cut this down and um, actually put some okra in here. But this one is actually doing pretty well. Um, if I don't actually treat for these stink bugs, it'll actually be going as well. But I was only supposed to leave one of these for seed. See how huge these things are? They look like acorn squash. Uh, but I'm actually gonna take the literal one and just leave the bigger one for seed because these, this plant actually did fairly well. Uh, aren't they beautiful? Look how full and vibrant these plants are. Save your zania seeds because they have do it. It's like flowers this year have been like wonderful. Like even the nasturtiums. You see how beautiful that is down there? And the echinacea. I'm actually going to take these, um, dig these up in the late fall when they die back and actually put them in the front yard. Um, they're gorgeous, but what I did not want is one flower bed, one bed literally for flowers. I don't have the space for that. I would have rather it have been a melon or something, so even though the bees love it, look at them. But they're going to have to come out. <laughs> um, we do have some basil that survived. This bed is kind of empty. I cut down the deal here, but we also have some, some Tulsi. That's a zania, so she might come out as well. Um, some squash that are trying to make it and then we do have our tomatoes coming in as well this over here is a Cherokee purple and then I'm not even sure what this one is I have to look at the tag might be a Kellogg's breakfast here and some comfrey I've been cutting back down echinacea um, I'm actually leaving these peas or I've left these peas just to uh, dry up on the vine and go to seed I do need to take them down though because we have rain coming. Yeah, we have rain coming. I don't want them to mildew, but I don't have a lot of space in the house. So I just thought as an experiment, what if I just left them on the vine? Would they rot or would they dry up? And we actually have all of the seeds we need for next year's pea harvest or next this fall's pea harvest. So I will set that here somewhere and maybe take these in the house before the, the actual rain comes. And look at these. Aren't they gorgeous? We even have some kale back there that I desperately need to do something with because she is beautiful. Might just take it and dry the leaves for powders and soups. Our cherry tomatoes are finally coming along. Although here, they're actually slower. They're further behind than the other ones we have in the, the garden beds, which I'll show you. Um, the tomatoes kind of need to be trellised up. Yeah, they definitely need to be pruned again. I actually did this a week ago. <laughs> Definitely need to take some more off. But we have our tomatoes here. Don't see any tomatoes forming yet. But these are blueberry tomatoes and Italian heirlooms. These two. Actually, look 
at that. We have our tomatoes coming in. I hadn't noticed that. Um, and our mugwort, which def desperately needs to be cut back. So I'll come out here and do that as well. We have some basil and some oregano here going to seed. So on. And actually, the basil is starting to come in now. So I actually do need to start topping that. Look at these. I think these are Cherokee purple tomatoes. You know, they'll be quite plentiful this year, hopefully. And then we have a couple of cherry tomatoes here. And some tiny tomatoes here. I'm not exactly sure. This is Cherokee purple as well, back there. We have some, I don't know what type of basil this is, honestly. I know I planted this basil for tea specifically. And we have some cat-faced tomatoes here. I really need to find those tags. I think they're in the back for what type of varieties these are. Oh, look at all of this basil. I need to come down and cut some of this down. Oh, these little ones look like Amish paste. Yeah, they are. Hopefully they get bigger than that. These are from saved seeds and the plants weren't necessarily all of that healthy when I planted them out. So hopefully we get a good harvest from them. Yeah, Amish paste here. And then this is from the tomato plant that my friend gave me. It's a, uh, what is this one? Oh, I gotta find those tags. It is something, I forgot. But look how beautiful she is. It's only one so far on this plant, but hopefully we get more. It just looks like the plant's flowers are kind of drying out, so maybe it's a watering issue. I don't know. I mean, it's been raining like crazy, but it doesn't seem to be penetrating the ground. I end up having to come out here, fertilize, and rewater. I'm not quite sure what that's about. But we do have some cinnamon basil here, a small patch, and then some borage that is going to seed. And to note, if you let this borage go to seed, you'll never get rid of it. So I do need to actually start cutting this back. Um, look back here. We have a bundle of Amish paste tomatoes there. Oh, look at her. She's gorgeous. We have some Rebecca here, which I'm pretty sure isn't going to flower this year, but it'll probably be wonderful next year. Some basil, a couple of squash plants that the squash bugs haven't taken out yet because I keep repotting, we just keep planting seeds out. <laughs> we have a cluster of, of tomatoes back here. This is the orange icicle given to me by my friend. She also needs to kind of be pruned here. I'm not quite sure what this plant is. I don't see any tomatoes, but I see a bunch of flowers. San Marzano. This one was actually purchased from the store. It is a pink brandy wine. So she's starting to catch up. Just need to attach it to the fence. We also have some Cherokee purple tomatoes here as well. So all in all, not bad. Um, like I said, I just keep planting seeds in hopes that we do get something, but it just, it's been, if I can be honest, it's kind of been a really, a, a kind of a weird year, but it's gorgeous, huh? Look at that tomato there. Already has her color. Yeah, I definitely have to come out here tomorrow and do some work. We're going to do a little pruning and maybe put some mulch down. Um, we have our leeks in here, which are doing something. And then I did plant out um, my lettuces. So over here we have some Merlot lettuce, which is just starting to come in. I use the um, toilet paper roll so that I can actually plant into the mulch. I just move some of the mulch back, plant the seed, and then stick the toilet paper roll in. And then I just water around the roll. Um, so there's like one or two seeds with one or two seedlings within the rows. As they get bigger, I'll just cut out one of the seedlings, um, and that actually helps your plant grow if they're not so squished back. So, but this is Paris Island lettuce here in this row, planted in between the the leeks, which will be harvested in the fall. We have a row of mustard greens here. Now look, they're coming in wonderfully, huh? We have a row of turnip greens here. I did have to sprinkle in some. Um, Sluggo, which is um, approved for uh, organic gardening. It's just kind of like a bacteria. Um, and I had to use that because we were having some slug damage in here. 
Um, there might be small signs of Japanese, I mean, of cucumber beetles. Um, the only thing you would need to do with that is just sprinkle some diatomaceous earth. But this damage seems like slug damage, and that's slowed down tremendously since putting down the slug off. And then here we have some collard grains, which definitely were taking on some damage. But hopefully with a little bit more rain, this bed will start to fill out again, and we'll have definitely have another row of salad greens. Um, and then as they begin to die out, I can actually upplant one or two of these plants and just move them um, to the other spaces because the collard greens, you don't need three in a row. So I, may, I might just take the middle one out and move it to where the Merlot lettuce is. Um, when these start to die out. Here we have our comfrey going back. I did cut her down so I can make some more comfrey tea. And we have our compost bin, which is doing wonderfully. And we also have our pepper row. And it's interesting because the peppers on the porch are actually doing so much better in terms of actually producing. Um, peppers like shade a lot and they don't like to be crowded out and they don't like a lot of water so the peppers on the front and the five gallon buckets are actually doing so much better um but we do have i'm starting to see some fruit on these this one here is a what did i do with the tag it's buried sugar rush so this is a sugar rush red and i don't have any sugar rush reds in the front so i'm thankful for that this is a cayenne pepper it's, yeah, it's a cayenne pepper here. This should be a sugar rush red. And all of my jalapeno peppers are on the porch. This is a sugar rush red here as well. This one should be as well. That's a Thai pepper there. This is definitely a sugar rush red here from Save Seed. Here's another one here. And this should be a cayenne pepper here yeah they're gonna kind of be all mixed in <laughs> look at all of these though this plant is loaded i will definitely grow these next year note to self about the recycle the uh, compost bin as well if you are using an old dresser like i did reinforce the sides with screws before you put it out because all of the wood now is bending because of water damage um, they're not meant to actually be outside and actually with be able to withhold themselves with all of the water so definitely um, secure your edges maybe even put a trim around it before you move it out but for the most part it's done really well um, a lot of stuff is breaking down in here I just added some potatoes so I might need to mix this in but look at this this has been weeks and weeks and weeks worth of compost um, I've actually taken some out to up pop my plants, but for the most part, all of this has broken down wonderfully. And there's so many worms in here, and it doesn't smell. So, really great thing to do, just an old dresser. Um, we do have some tomatoes coming in, though. Look at this. These are the, I think these are the Sugar Rush. No, Sun Sugar. And they are delicious. Mm. We do have some raspberries. I'm going to try to see if I can get to them before the wasps do, because they tend to like this area. <laughs> Look at that. We've been picking them like for the last month or so. Strawberries have actually, I thought they had stopped producing. I do see little tiny strawberries that aren't really worth eating too much. But actually, we have some strawberries coming back. I've been cutting off the runners, which is something you should definitely do if you actually want a strawberry harvest. Um, a lot of the energy goes into the runners, and you won't get any plant. I mean, you won't get any berries, but yeah, I do see quite a few coming, so that's encouraging. And then what has been wonderful it has been the blackberries, which we have been picking buckets of. Like, they are loaded. Do you see this? And they are huge. Look at that. Me and my son have just come out here in the mornings and just like, just eat them directly off the vine. So, you know, it might have been a disappointing year for squash somewhat. Look at that. That is a cricket. But it has been wonderful for, you know, it's been wonderful for berries and for, um, yeah, for berries. 
I told my neighbor I wanted to tell her that anything on her side is free game, but I think the birds have been getting the ones on her side. But I've actually been covering up ours with a, um, a old curtain that I got from a used store, and we just used some tomato clips. I actually don't like these for tomatoes because when they get bigger, it seems to like choke them out, but they're wonderful for holding up the sheets. So look at this. And I really don't do anything but mulch this area. I don't, I really don't even have to really water, but we have gotten so, so many blackberries from this plant and she's still producing. We also have tons and tons and tons of elderberry. Look at this. I don't even know what I'm gonna do with all of these elderberries. I definitely don't. Me and my family do not go through that much elderberry syrup um, to justify having to plant this huge. <laughs> She's bigger than the building now. I mean, on the other side, it's just full of nothing but elderberries. And I'm pretty sure the birds will take their fill, but I'm gonna try to get some as well. Just for comparison, I mean, look at this. Is she not just absolutely beautiful? She triples in size every single year. It's literally only three plants. Well, it was three plants. She's spread. We have our fig, which is suffering in the heat and desperately needs to be watered. But look at this. We are getting fruit. Can you see those little figs right there? I don't even want to believe it. I'm just thinking something's going to get to them or I'm not going to have a fig. But I would love to be able to just know what a homegrown fig tastes like. I don't even like figs. But you see, that's the problem. Wasps. So whenever you have a fig tree, you're gonna end up having those. All right, so thank you so much for following me through this garden journey. Um, as mentioned, it's not necessarily where we want the garden to be right now. Um, in my mind, you know, when you're planting all of these plants and these seeds, you just have images of like bug-free locations and I don't know, you just see something different, but there's so much beauty in the garden if you just actually come out and look around. And we have harvest too. We have blackberries and raspberries and blueberries and peas and squash, and we'll have tomatoes soon. And you know, there's just some beauty in it. And chamomile and bunches of herbs. And you know, there's, there's beauty in this garden. And if I just come out long enough and just stop thinking about what it is that I want to see, but think about what it is that I have. Um, I'm quite grateful for it. So anyway, thank you guys for walking with me through the beauty of this garden. And I hope your gardens are doing great as well. And even if they haven't, they aren't. And even if this hasn't been the best year for you, I hope that you can at least go outside and just get rid of all of your preconceived ideas of what you wanted it to be and just try to enjoy it for what it is. Even if the squirrels and the birds are decapitating your tomato plants and, you know, eating your sunflowers and the bugs are killing your squash, <laughs> there's still some beauty in it. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. You have a